So I'm going to start right in here and we're going to do crown molding coping. So if we come over to the bench, here are some of the students. Hey everyone. Hey, how's it going everybody? Yeah. So crown molding um, has multiple profiles and it goes on the wall. So you're used to seeing it at the top of a wall up against the ceiling, right? And it, you, it can look something like that. So this is like a little model that the students will do to practice cutting uh, miters with the crown molding. But when you have, you have an outside corner, but when you have an inside corner, you need to get that profile to match. So for example, you have to get an inside corner to match, just like that, all right? So how do you get this piece to come in and match this crazy uh, crown molding profile? Well, I'm gonna take you through that right now. So I have a couple pieces of crown molding. The first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna cut it on the chop saw. So you can see that I have a, an angle cut through the crown molding. Next, we're gonna talk about how we're gonna use the coping saw to cut along that profile. And that's what I'm gonna exactly demonstrate. So the first thing we have to do is understand that we have to cut up one angle then we come in and we're gonna cut a second angle or a second uh, track. Then we're gonna come up a third time and finally the fourth time. So there's four cuts, one, two, three, and four. And we're gonna do that. So we're gonna lay out and we're gonna trace the very edge. So right where the wood meets the white, that's what I wanna cut right to. So I'm gonna use a coping saw to cut right to this penciled line. Again, I'm going to do one, two, three, and four cuts. So I'm going to leave the line. That's the first cut. You can see how I'm trying to go right to that crisp white edge. Not into it, not over the line, but split the line. Here's cut number two. I'm gonna move my set of things just a fraction. So when you're Cutting a coat with using a coping saw, using a blade that has 15 or 18 teeth per inch, tiny little teeth, and you're not gonna try to force the blade, you're just gonna go keep the saw moving and you're gonna go back and forth, letting the teeth, the fine little teeth, do all the work. And I'm gonna track right along that pencil line, right down my poke profile. Now, because I have a mask. Normally I'd be blown off that sawdust, but not now. I'm tracking right along. That profile that I traced with my pencil. Staying relaxed, back cutting it. Now that's one, two, I have a third cut here. I wanna stay right off my line. Now I'm gonna cut straight across here. That's a little trick. You have to actually if you think about that corner coming out. That corner is gonna meet the other molding. Now I can see how I did. 
So I have the crown loaded up. This one's coming into it. And I can push it right there. And I can make it fit in the corner. Now, if there's any gap, it's because every little piece of, uh, any piece of wood sticking out will prevent it from fitting perfectly tight. So we can dial that in with sharp chisels. We can take a little bit off. We'll, we'll teach you how to sharpen a chisel so that you can take off the smallest little bit of wood, right? Just like in other programs, sharpening is a big deal at North Bennett because as I say, it's more fun when it's sharp. If you don't have sharp tools or a sharp wit or a sharp mind, you're not gonna enjoy it as much as, as you would normally. So you can keep fitting it and dialing it until you get the perfect fit. That's one way of coping, with a coping saw, chop saw, and by hand. 